Commander Ava Sterling's breath formed the visor of her helmet as she floated towards the derelict vessel. The alien shipwreck, a twisted mass of metal and unknown materials, hung silently against the backdrop of stars. Its hull, scarred by cosmic storms and celestial battles, whispered secrets of a forgotten epoch. Ava's heart raced as she reached the threshold, her suit's lights piercing the darkness within. Shadows danced along the walls, forming grotesque shapes that seemed to watch her every move. The air was thick with the scent of ozone, and something else, something ancient and otherworldly. She moved cautiously through the narrow corridors, the silence oppressive, broken only by the sound of her own breathing and the occasional creak of the ship settling around her. The deeper she ventured, the more the ship seemed alive, its walls pulsating with a faint, eerie glow. In the central chamber she found it, a sarcophagus of sorts, bathed in a ghostly light. The lid was adorned with symbols that made her head spin, their meaning elusive, yet disturbingly familiar. Compelled by a force beyond her understanding, Eva reached out to touch the surface. The moment her fingers brushed the alien material, reality warped. The chamber twisted, the walls bending inward, and the symbols on the sarcophagus blazed with an unholy light. Ava's scream was swallowed by the void as the ship awoke, its ancient inhabitant stirring from its slumber. Visions of distant worlds and lost civilizations flooded her mind, each more terrifying than the last. She saw the ship's journey through the cosmos, its mission of conquest and destruction, and felt the malevolent presence of its pilot. Ava fought to regain control, to pull herself back to the safety of her ship, but the alien intelligence was overwhelming. It had waited eons for a new host, and now, in the depths of space, it had found one. Without music, their movements sinking with the rhythm of the universe. 
as the evening drew to a close, Jasper presented Gwendolyn with a gift. A spark from his prized collection. She accepted it with a giggle, promising to treasure it forever. Their first date was a whirlwind of surreal moments and eccentric delights. And as they parted ways with promises to see each other again, the Soda River burbled in agreement, and the pink sky winged heralding the beginning of a bizarre yet beautiful romance. In the shadowed recesses of a forgotten realm, three figures stood as the embodiment of humanity's darkest emotions. Cloaked in ethereal garments that seemed woven from the very essence of sorrow, they were the personifications of doubt, despair, and greed. Doubt, on the left, wore a crown of twisted branches and skulls, her eyes hidden beneath a veil of uncertainty. Her presence was a constant whisper, a nagging question that gnawed at the soul, making every decision a labyrinth of second guessing. In the centre stood despair, her head adorned with a halo of spheres, each one a world of lost hope. She held a cigarette, the smoke curling around her like the tendrils of forgotten dreams. Her touch was cold, a reminder of the abyss that lay just beneath the surface of every heart, waiting to pull it under. To the right was greed, her gaze piercing through the veil of material desire. Her attire was opulent, yet decayed, a testament to the insatiable hunger that consumed everything in its path. Around her neck hung strings of pearls, each one a symbol of the countless lives sacrificed at the altar of avarice. Together they formed a trinity of torment, a reminder of the fragile nature of the human spirit. In their presence the air was thick with the weight of unspoken fears and unfulfilled desires, a testament to the eternal struggle within every soul. In a realm where the stars had dimmed and the universe whispered in hushed tones, there existed a being named Eon. Eon was not bound by time or space, and their existence stretched across the infinite void. They had witnessed the birth and fall of civilizations and the fleeting moments that composed the tapestry of existence. Neon's form was ethereal and the wisp of consciousness that floated through the cosmos. They had seen the beauty of creation, the vibrant colors of nebulas and the graceful dance of galaxies. Yet, with each passing eon, a sense of emptiness crept into their essence. Of the universe, once so vivid and exhilarating, now seem distant and muted. Emptiness was not born of loneliness, for Eon had never known companionship. It was something deeper, a realization that all. No matter how grand or significant, eventually faded into the silence of the void. This truth weighed heavily upon Eon, casting a shadow over the splendor that surrounded them. In their travels, Eon came upon a small blue planet teeming with life. They observed the creatures below, each so full of purpose and desire. Eon saw love and joy. Sorrow and pain, and the endless cycle of life and death. Beings on this planet fought against the void, carving meaning from their brief existence with a fervor that Eon had never known. It was then that Eon understood the beauty of emptiness. It was a canvas, a backdrop against which the trauma of existence could unfold. The void was not a pit of despair, but a space of infinite potential. Not even the smallest spark of life could shine with an intensity that defied the darkness. And so, Eon continued their journey, no longer a mere observer, but a participant in the great expanse. They embraced the emptiness, allowing it to fill them with a newfound appreciation for the fleeting moments that made existence so precious. In the heart of the void, Eon found not emptiness.
secluded corner of a quaint village, there existed a magical garden where plants had emotions. The garden's caretaker, Oliver, was known for his gentle heart and endless empathy. But today, as the sun dipped below the horizon, the garden was enveloped in a wave of sadness. The vegetables, usually vibrant and lively, wore downcast expressions. Carrots drooped, cucumbers curled in sorrow, and tomatoes seemed to blush with melancholy. Oliver, with his round, tear-streaked face, stood amongst them, clutching a worn green watering can. It had been a week since the villagers had come by to marvel at the garden. The usual laughter and cheer that filled the space were replaced by an eerie stillness. The absence of visitors left the garden feeling neglected and forgotten. Oliver knelt beside a particularly mournful lettuce, brushing away a tear from its leafy surface. There, there, he murmured, his voice trembling. They'll come back. They just need to remember the magic we bring. But deep down, Oliver knew it wasn't just the visitor's absence that saddened him. He felt a growing distance between himself and the garden, as if the enchantment that once bound them was slowly unraveling. Determined to rekindle the connection, Oliver spent the entire night tending to his beloved plants. He whispered stories of hope and resilience, sang lullabies that floated on the evening breeze, and ensured every plant received a gentle touch of care. As dawn approached, a soft glow spread across the garden. The plants began to lift their heads, their colors returning with a renewed sense of vitality. The tomatoes gleamed, the carrots stood tall, and even the cucumbers unfurled with a hint of joy. Oliver, though still weary, felt a flicker of hope ignite within him. The garden's magic was not lost. It had merely needed a reminder of the love that nurtured it. Together, he and the garden would await the return of the villagers, knowing that sometimes a little bit of patience and tenderness 
could heal even the deepest of sorrows. So, in the heart of the forgotten garden, amidst laughter and tears, the promise of brighter days began to bloom once more. Artificial intelligence, image generation, is a rapidly evolving field that leverages machine learning algorithms to create images from scratch or modify existing ones. This technology has seen significant advancements in recent years driven by the development of sophisticated neural networks, particularly generative adversarial networks and variational autoencoders. Generative adversarial networks. Generative adversarial networks are a class of AI models that consist of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator. The generator creates images while the discriminator evaluates them against real images. Through this adversarial process, the generator learns to produce increasingly realistic images. GANs have been used to create everything from photorealistic portraits to entirely new artistic styles. On the other hand, work by encoding images into a latent space and then decoding them back into images. This process allows for the generation of new images by sampling from the latent space. The AEs are particularly useful for generating images that have a specific structure or style, as they can learn to capture the underlying features of the training data. The applications of AI image generation are vast and varied in the entertainment industry. AI-generated images are used for creating special effects, designing characters, and generating virtual environments. In the field of art, AI is being used to create new forms of digital art, pushing the boundaries of creativity. Additionally, AI image generation has practical applications in areas such as medical imaging, where it can be used to generate synthetic data for training purposes or to enhance the quality of medical images. Therefore, it is crucial to develop and implement ethical guidelines and regulations to ensure the responsible use of this technology. In conclusion, AI image generation is a powerful tool with a wide range of applications. As the technology continues to advance, it is essential to balance innovation with ethical considerations to harness its full potential responsibly. Possibly. The scent of burnt toast filled Agnes' tiny flat, mingling with the metallic tang of her blood pressure medication and the lingering sweetness of her son's forgotten apple core on the counter. She sighed, a sound as weary as the creaking floorboards beneath her feet. Another day, she muttered, rubbing her aching temples. Just another day. Her eyes, tired as faded denim, landed on a crumpled flyer on the table, a job advertisement for a baker's assistant at the local bakery. The scent of freshly baked bread always brought back memories of her mother's warm kitchen, filled with the comforting aroma and the clatter of mixing bowls, a pang of longing shot through her. Agnes hadn't baked since, well, since before things fell apart, her husband had left, taking their dreams and leaving her with a mountain of debt and a gnawing emptiness. She'd taken on any job she could find. Cleaning offices, serving tables, walking dogs, but none brought the satisfaction that kneading dough used to. She picked up the flyer, the paper rough beneath her fingertips. The words swam before her eyes. Experience preferred. Agnes hadn't baked professionally in years. Shame tightened its grip around her throat. Agnes 
Agnes knew she wasn't skilled enough to land a job without preparation. She grabbed her worn cookbook, its pages dog-eared and stained with memories. The scent of yeast and sugar filled her senses as she flicked through the pages. It felt familiar, comforting, like coming home. Days turned into weeks. Agnes spent every spare moment honing her skills. Her flat was a whirlwind of flower dust and the rhythmic hum of the mixer. She tasted, tweaked, experimented. The burnt toast became a distant memory, replaced by the intoxicating aroma of warm bread filling her tiny kitchen. Finally, the day arrived. Agnes stood before the bakery owner, her heart pounding like a frantic drum. He smiled, his eyes crinkling at the corners. You have a gift, Agnes. Lorelei the lascivious sat upon her throne of bones, the skulls of those she'd brought to ruin serving as steps beneath her feet. Her long, flowing hair spilled over the armrests like a waterfall of white silk, its tips brushing against the cool surface of the chair. The horns atop her head gleamed in the candlelight, casting eerie shadows across her face. She wore a form-fitting outfit that clung to her every curve, revealing just enough skin to make mortal men weak in the knees and send female admirers into fits of envy. Her crossed legs revealed toned thighs and smooth, unblemished skin, contrasting sharply with the skulls below. Her eyes narrowed as she scanned the room, taking in the many candles flickering on the stands around her. Each wick represented a soul, a life force she'd claimed for herself. The stars twinkling above her head were not mere celestial bodies. They were portals to other realms, gateways through which she could summon untold horrors and wonders. The keys at her side represented the keys to eternity itself, the ability to open doors that mortal minds couldn't even begin to comprehend. As the High Priestess of Sordid Sin, she was in charge of leading her followers down a path of hedonism and debauchery showing them the pleasures of the flesh and the delights of the mind. She was their guide through the darkest corners of the human soul, indulging in the sins that lesser mortals tried so desperately to ignore, and she revelled in her power over them all. Her enigmatic smile curved upward, a silent promise of decadent delights yet to come. As she reached out to caress one of the candles, its flame danced higher, reflecting off her horns like tiny spears of fire. She leaned in closer, her breath fanning the flames as she whispered words in an ancient language that only she knew. The wax began to melt, dripping onto her hand and pooling at the base of the candle, ready to be snuffed out by her delicate fingers. She was the embodiment of transgression, the personification of all that was taboo and dark and forbidden, and she delighted in every moment of it. She sat upon her throne, ruler of a realm where debauchery reigned supreme, and the only rule was to break every other rule. She was beauty and the beast, an enigma wrapped in black silk and bone, and she owned the night. And as the candle's flame sputtered and died, she let out a soft, satisfied sigh, knowing that another soul had returned to the oblivion from whence it came. She looked up at the ceiling its intricate patterns of stars and moons reflecting her own power and influence, and felt an overwhelming sense of satisfaction course through her veins. Lorelei the lascivious was truly a force to be reckoned with, and all who dared cross her path did so at their own peril. For in the realm of sin, she reigned supreme. <laughs> A 
restless Sharp as shattered glass Pierce the air Signaling the end of summer's lazy rain The sun, a pale ghost Behind wispy clouds Cast long shadows that stretch like fingers Across the browning grass A breeze, scented with damp earth And decaying leaves Rustled through the branches Whispering secrets only the trees could understand Beneath my feet, fallen leaves Crackled like parchment underfoot A symphony of amber, crimson and gold A scent of wood smoke carried on In the heart of the enchanted glade, where moonlight danced on dewdrops and stars whispered ancient secrets, lived a curious little being named Aurelian. With iridescent wings that shimmered in every color of the rainbow and a top hat perched jauntily on his head, Aurelian was the guardian of kindness. One misty evening, Aurelian fluttered to the top of the tallest mushroom in the glade. The smaller winged creatures, known as gleamers, gathered around, their eyes wide with anticipation. Aurelian had a special magic that he shared only on nights like these, a magic that could light even the darkest of hearts. Gather round, my friends, Aurelian called out in his melodic voice. Tonight we cast our kindness into the world. With a wave of his tiny hand, stars began to swirl in the sky, forming intricate patterns that mesmerized the gleamers. Each star was a spark of kindness, waiting to be unleashed. Aurelian began to hum a tune, and the gleamers joined in, their harmonies blending into a sweet ethereal melody. As they sang, the stars descended, showering the glade in a soft golden light. Each gleamer caught a star, holding it gently in their tiny hands. Remember, Aurelian said, Kindness is a powerful magic. It has the power to transform, to heal, and to bring joy. Share these stars with those in need and watch the world change. With that, the gleamers took flight, their wings creating a symphony of light and music. They spread out across the land, leaving trails of stardust in their wake. Each star they shared brought a smile, a tear of joy, 
or a heart warmed. Back in the glade, Aurelian watched with a smile. He knew that in a world where kindness was often forgotten, a little magic could go a long way. And so, every night, he and the gleamers continued their mission, believing that one day their stars would light up every corner of the world. For in the enchanted glade and beyond, kindness truly was magic.